I've got your energy stories for this, the fifth week of October 2023. And as part of its third Queen Energy solicitation round, New York has awarded provisional offtake agreements to three offshore wind projects totaling 4,032 megawatts. The winners were first the 1,400 megawatt Attentive Energy One project supported by Total Energies, Rise Light and Power, and Corio Generation that will use Rise's existing transmission infrastructure at the Ravenswood Generating Center in New York City. The second one is the 1300 megawatt community offshore wind project to be built by RWE and National Grid as part of a larger 3200 megawatt undertaking. And third, the 1300 megawatt Excelsior wind project backed by Vineyard Offshore, a subsidiary of Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners that will deliver energy to Long Island. 22 land-based renewable projects also received offers with total capacity awarded in the round of 6400 megawatts. In the European offshore wind game, a consortium of DHI, Orsted, Siemens Gamesa, Stiestal Offshore, Stroming, and Technical University of Denmark is teaming up on a test lab for floating wind turbines as large as 20 megawatts. The lab will include a model-scale wind turbine mounted on models of new floating foundations to test loads from breaking waves, turbulence, and potential mooring line failures, and it will validate engineering models used for floating foundation design. Meanwhile, Chinese turbine maker Mingyang isn't waiting, and it turned heads with announced plans for a 22-megawatt offshore wind turbine platform citing advancements in manufacturing and lightweight carbon fiber technology. The turbines will work in both fixed and floating installation configurations. Moving to hydrogen, Duke Energy said it will soon break ground in Florida on the first U.S. demonstration project to generate clean electricity with hydrogen from an end-to-end system for producing, storing, and burning 100% green H2. Duke will team up with Sargent and Lundy and GE Vernova, starting with its existing 74.5 megawatt DeBerry solar plant and two 1 megawatt electrolyzer units to make clean hydrogen stored in nearby reinforced containers. Turbines will burn hydrogen during peak periods in an upgraded GE combustion turbine using a natural gas hydrogen blend that can go up to 100% H2, the first combustion turbine in the country to use such high percentages. Anticipated start date is 2024. Turning to EVs, BP Pulse announced it will buy $100 million worth of Tesla DC fast chargers that will go up to speeds of 250 kW. This is the first time Tesla chargers will be used by a third-party EV charging network. Chargers will be installed as early as next year at gas stations, travel centers of America locations, and custom-built hubs near airports and major metropolitan areas, as well as for commercial fleet customers. Also in EVs, Stellantis and battery recycler Orono announced formation of a JV to recycle battery, factory scrap, and end-of-life vehicle batteries in both U.S. and European markets. This will help the automaker access critical supplies of battery inputs such as cobalt, lithium, and nickel. Two more stories in the EV space suggest a few growing pains, though. First, although its EV sales were up 44% over last year, Ford reported Q3 losses in its electric car division of $1.3 billion. Losses per vehicle were calculated at an eye-popping $36,000 in Q3. Consequently, the company intends to slow some of its planned investments in new plants. Meanwhile, Hertz is decelerating adoption of its rental fleet EVs, citing an unexpected hit to the bottom line, resulting from declining resale values of Tesla, which came as a result of Tesla's recent price cuts. Hertz's CEO also noted that repair costs of EVs have been higher than expected. With nearly 50,000 vehicles already, about 11% of its rental fleet, Hertz is nonetheless adhering to its plan to include 100,000 electric vehicles from Tesla and 175,000 from GM. And finally, the DOE released a roadmap for transforming the nation's grid interconnection processes to address today's lengthy queues, which can result in delays of up to five years. The plan focuses on four areas, increasing interconnection data access and transparency, improving and accelerating the overall process, promoting economic efficiency, and maintaining grid reliability. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.